All right, so the weather's nice. The car still is having trouble shifting, so we're gonna go to plan B, and I think we're gonna install a manual valve body kit. All right, so welcome back guys. And like I said, the car is still having trouble shifting and we're gonna go ahead and go with like a uh, full manual style valve body. We're going to uh, reuse the valve body since I know it's in good shape um, with the shift kit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the shift kit and I'm gonna install this Transgo, it's a AODE3 kit. And what this does is it bypasses the computer Part of everything it just bypasses all the electronics and lets you operate the car in full manual shift mode which may suck in like normal traffic because you're going to be shifting like it's a manual car without a clutch but it's going to eliminate the issue with the not shifting in time because now it's all going to be completely reliant on myself so we're going to be installing that and just to help to make sure i hit my shifts right I got this Holly Sniper shift turn, shift light here. And what I'm gonna be doing is putting that in there and that works with coil unplug setups as well. And the part number on that is 840007. So if you guys are looking at that as well, this is another option if you have your 4R70W or AODE that's just not shifting in time um, with the gear change or anything. and. The main reason for this is me nor my tuner could really figure out what's going on with this thing. So before the cam swap did fine, obviously it has to be in the tune somewhere, but I'm not educated enough to start playing with the black magic of the transmission. And you know, the things that he was saying were <clears throat> things that this shouldn't be happening, that shouldn't, whatever. We're just gonna go ahead and eliminate all of this and just do it full manual and that way it's just gonna be old school. I mean, old school drag car kind of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it over the next day or two. So I'm gonna take my time doing this, make sure it's it's done properly. All right, so it talks about the EPC solenoid removal. And what you have to do is you have to loosen this nut. It's a 13 16 And then out here is a 12 millimeter. And this roll pin must come out. You'll have two eight millimeter bolts on the gear selector. And then you can slide this back far enough to get your EPC solenoid out. I've already installed the, um, the vacuum modulator. So this right here is the vacuum modulator pin and the valving, vacuum modulator is installed. And right up here is where you drill and tap. You can kind of see it. That's where you're drilling tapping at. That's a, basically a half inch out from these holes. So half inch out, I started with a small drill and worked my way up to the, um, the tap drill and then tapped at 1 8 MPT. So once all that's done, you'll zip tie the uh, vacuum lines. There's gonna be a spring inside this vacuum so that way it doesn't collapse. Now this pretty much just floats here, which I'm not exactly a fan of, but uh, it is part of the kit. It does come with a spacer, it goes in here. And that's how this is. So this is going to completely replace your electronic pressure control solenoid. So that's how that goes in there. I spent most of the day just finding the placement, making sure I drill and tap in the right spots and installed everything properly. All right, the end of day two. And uh, <laughs> this is a little harder job than I thought it was gonna be, but we got it all done. As you can see, the yard is a complete mess. We're started up, running through the gears. Everything seems to be doing great. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is I haven't run the vacuum source for the vacuum modulator. So I'm going to uh, not drive it, obviously, until I get the uh, vacuum reference source uh, hooked and plumbed into there because I think it'll shift maybe a little too, too rough. All right, guys, so we got uh, everything put back together. Everything's running. Uh, we're gonna take it on test drive. The only thing that sucks is we couldn't hook up the vacuum modulator on it because um, where they tell you to drill and the instructions, I got it dead on, but the nipple is so close to the case, you can't get a vacuum line on it. 
so it's going to be running high line pressure until I can pull this transmission out and put the stall converter in it and grind uh, the case down a little bit to put a vacuum for the vacuum modulator. So we're going to try it out and see just how it is and how she shifts, how quick she shifts, and uh, see if it's too rough maybe for street. I hope it's not, but we're going to find out. So let's go. So we're in first now. So all in all, uh, everything turned out as planned. Everything works great. Uh, the only thing that's kind of upsetting is that uh, vacuum line to ease basically the one two shift. It's not too bad as long as you shift under like 2000 RPM. Um, having max line pressure does kind of scare me a little bit, um, but with 160,000 miles on this transmission, I'm probably have to end up rebuilding it soon anyway, especially with the abuse I'm gonna be putting it, putting it through. So, uh, Overall, I think it's actually a, a success, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and we got plenty more coming.